I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about jQuery boilerplate, SAS, maps, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have the jQuery boilerplate website. Now, as you might expect from the name, this gives you all sorts of boilerplate to jumpstart jQuery plugin development. And I can tell that because it says it in the header of the website right there. So here is the most popular template for beginners and above. That means somebody who has more skill than a beginner, not necessarily somebody who is physically above a beginner. Uh, and this is very, very easy to use. Include jQuery, include this boilerplate min, and you are good to go. So here we go. This is the default plugin name. That's what you will be redefining when you create your own plugin. Now, the idea here is that you have this boilerplate plugin, then you go through and you change it to do what you actually want your plugin to do. If we go ahead and look at this demo, here is the index.html file that shows you the minimum that you need to get started. Now, this is the directory structure. If we look in the dist directory, that contains the boilerplate code. Now, this is going to be what you're going to be replacing when you create your own jQuery plugin. So here is what the plugin does. This is the element it works on. Here are the default settings. Now, all of these different jQuery boilerplate plugins that they link to here are going to just save you time if you are going to be creating your own jQuery plugin. So if this is something you plan on doing, definitely check this out because it's going to speed up development quite a bit. Nice. Well, next up is SASME. It's a, you can visualize SAS color functions in real time without compiling. So normally you would have to compile your SAS code in order to see how these color functions are playing out, but this does it automatically in real time. So I can type in a color here. So I'll type in like an orange color, and that is going to show me the output color. So pretty boring so far. That's what I put in. That's what came out. Same stuff. Well, if we use some of these sliders here, I can darken this color. I can desaturate it. I can adjust the hue. So these are functions that you can use in SAS, adjust hue, desaturate, and darken. But this shows you not only what that will actually look like, but also what it will look like in code. So you can use something that's more human and familiar, like these little sliders, and then it will output the SAS code that you need to do that and give you the output color. So when would you use this? This is nice if... Whenever you want to sass someone. That's right, if you just want to sass me. <laughs> um, no, this is nice if, for example, you are trying to make a new website color scheme. And you could theoretically just put in a single color and then have all sorts of darken, desaturate, or saturate, or hue adjustments that use that input color to create an entire color scheme. Kind of like on the Materialize framework we talked about last week. Exactly. So this is a pretty handy tool. Definitely be sure to check this out. Very cool. Uh, next up, we have gitignore.io. This is going to create useful git ignore files for your project. I feel like I'm getting ignored all the time. Uh, I don't know who said that, but I'm going to just move on with what we were talking about. Now, a git ignore file is something that will tell git which files, as you would expect, to ignore from the source code control in your project. So, for example, if we start typing in something here, we got, okay, we have a Bower git ignore. What happens when we generate that? Okay, it tells us to ignore the Bower components, cache, registry, and temp directory. Now, if we're doing a Rails site, for example, and hit generate. It will show us what Rails files to ignore, as well as comments saying which ones are going to specifically be left out. Now, depending on what kind of project you're working on, it's easy to bet that there is a git ignore avail available for it. So go ahead and check this out if you need to ignore some files very quickly. Poor person. Next up is Slick. It is dubbed the last carousel you'll ever need. Because nobody uses carousels anymore. <laughs> That's 
Not true. Uh, there are some pretty cool demos of Slick here, so let's check those out. It will take us down here, and we can hit these buttons, and whoa, look at that. It will cycle through these different images here, and it also has the little dots at the bottom. Just like you'd expect, you can click on those and jump to any point in the carousel. You can also have multiple items in a single slide. So let's say that you are using a responsive framework like Bootstrap or Foundation, and you want to have multiple items at certain screen resolutions inside of your slider. Well, with Slick, you can do that and just sort of create a context to contain them. So, of course, it's also responsive itself. I won't demonstrate that, but you get the idea. You can have variable widths. You can have ones that change height. So, let's check that out. When you scroll through those, these are different heights, and Slick will actually figure out how to adapt to it, and so much more. So, how do you use this? Well, you set up your HTML markup. You move the Slick folder, which you can download here, into your project, and then you add slick.css into your head. And it also does require jQuery. But I've actually uh, used this on some, some of my own projects, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. I, I really had some good experiences with this, and I definitely recommend it uh, that you check it out. Very cool. Yeah. Next up, we have a project called jQuery Mapiel. Now, this is going to be uh, Vector Maps. It's a jQuery plugin based on Raphael.js that allows you to display dynamic vector maps. Ah, uh, so it's maps that are based on Raphael. Raphael. That's why and that's we. That's where Mapiel. Mapiel. Map Mapiel. Got it. Yeah. Uh, Raphael.js is a small JavaScript library that simplifies working with vector graphics on the web. Kind of gives you a little bit of an abstraction when you're working with these. So what in the world can you do with Mapiel? Let's go ahead and look. They have all of these different examples on JS Fiddle. So here is a map with a legend for plotted cities. So as we go through and uh, hover over the different cities, it will show you the population. Now, this is all done with this HTML, CSS, and JavaScript right here. So you can see that this is very, very easy to use. We just call the mapil function and then give it our different options. So right here, we have a legend, plot, and default area. And then we can actually go through, give it the different slices, which are going to be the areas of the map. We're going to say, OK, this is a size of four. It's a circle filled with this color, and give it a label. And then the rest of it is just data and different plots, including latitude and longitude, which really helps when you are working with maps. Now, there are, of course, a ton of different examples here. We're not going to go through all of them, but uh, you can see this is extremely easy to use and is going to abstract a lot for you when you are working with different maps. Uh, now, there are some very thorough documentation, which you can find in the show notes right below this video, so I recommend you check that out. Well, that is all we have time for this week. I am at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out the show notes below the video. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you next week.